All right. It, apparently, my man Joe is probably still cooking up his beer chicken, not thinking I'm done yet. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> Joe, where are you at, son? Dude, flip the grill, bro. Flip the grill and let's talk some stock. Joe, do you, I thought you were going to sidle in, man. Here, let me just add you. One sec, buddy. All right, Joe, you can talk now, and I'll promote you to a panelist as well. What's up, bro? What is up, man? How you doing? Oh. Dude, let me let me tell you something. There we man. go. Like, bro, every I swear to God, man, I am like the most supportive dude in the world. If if I see that someone has put together something that I think is really wonderful, I'm like the number one person to cheerlead and give them credit, bro. Your boot camp on options is so unbelievable. Like, I'm like speechless, dude. I'm like fucking speechless, bro. Tell everybody Appreciate about you. it, bro. Please tell everybody about it and like what to expect. Joe, I want to introduce it this week because we don't give enough attention to how wonderful it is and the, and the resources that, dude, small account guys can benefit. So the, uh, the Options Boot Camp is four episodes of literally every single... The- I'll show, Joe, let me, let me go to the videos. I'll Sorry. show them how to access it. Yep. So the Options Boot Camp is, is four episodes of really truly four episodes and then there's some extracurricular uh uh, courses in there that you can watch but go to page two this is the very beginning of it or yeah this is the first one yeah part one part two part three part four two of the dudes in the large cap room that are options traders as well helped put this together so it it is a very 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 structured powerpoint on teaches you how options are priced, how to understand what you're reading, um, pretty much from ground zero. And what I want everybody to understand when it comes down to options, me and Tosh talked about this yesterday. Well, the fucker finally convinced me after a year, dude, he was in my ear every week. Like, bro, why aren't you doing options with me and Brian? I'm like, all right, man, hold my beer. (laughs) Bro, it, 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 um, it, uh, so the purpose of, of the options that you trade are, they are just instruments to trade. You don't have to worry about, I have to exercise my shares to get this contract, to get this due, to do, 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 do. They're just, they're just instruments to trade the volatility. Yep. So um, that's, that, that's it. And so just like we use stocks, we use stocks as just, as just little trading instruments things to capture the volatility from those options are the same way except it's a leveraged instrument and so well, people and, are very and, and Joe, afraid let me, let me put in right of, here because the eye-opener for me dude with options was like guys if you really don't take the time to actually understand even the most basic things about options it's just going to be this like thing in your brain that's going to be overwhelming you're like literally what is it like joe just said dude it's an instrument so if you want to trade a 600 dollars stock like netflix you might be able to trade the option of it, which is kind of just like trading the stock, but dude, it might be priced at $10. Meaning think about the buying power you would need to have to trade Netflix versus the buying power of a $10 stock with the underlying, I'm sorry, a $10 premium or option where the underlying would be a $600 ticker. That's the whole point. You get to trade anything you want. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but then you don't have things like the freaking pattern day trader rule, right? Um, you still have it, but you don't but, have to, but you don't, all you need is a cash account. Well, you that's don't need a, yeah. a margin account. Like you have to, like you have to, um, like you, like you need in small caps, most people in small caps, you have to have a margin account if you want to short sell. Um, and so in a, in options, you don't need a margin account. You just need a cash account and you can short and long all at the same. And you just use options to do it. And I mean, you just use those as trading vehicles. It's not, I'm not talking fancy stuff like selling premium and capturing debit spreads, yeah, credit sure. spreads, calendar spreads, hooker spreads. I don't care what it is. It, you don't need to do any of that stuff. They're just vehicles. So think back, I've compared this yesterday with Tosh. Think back to when 
you know, like OTCs now, OTCs, the, uh, the, the volume has died, right? There's no liquidity or very little liquidity to trade any kind of size on those with any kind of confidence unless right. you're trading like GBTC for Bitcoin. And so with Robin Hooders coming into the market and these retailers that don't understand anything and they just go in and what they do is they go long options, they go buy options. And so these, these uneducated traders have provided more liquidity in the options world than there ever was three, four, five years ago. Like I used to, I, I looked into options before and I was like, man, there's just no freaking liquidity here unless I trade like spy. And I didn't want to trade the spy and I didn't really understand very much about it. And so slowly as time went on back in 2019, Back in 2019, man, options volume skyrocketed because a lot more market participants are in that market right, now. Right, and you don't checks, need a man. big account. Yeah, oh, you don't need a big checks, account. We got Robin Hood, all that stuff. Dude, I put just for the fun of it, and I'll tell you guys this because I'm going to release the results eventually. But I'm doing this for uh, to show what you can do with with for all the small account people. Um, I put 1500 bucks in an account like 45 days ago yeah. and I've been trading one contract in that account. So like I take trades and then I'll take trades in that small account. I just like one contract in this one and then other trades in the other one. And for those who don't in know guys, one account, contract is a hundred shares. Yeah. In that small account, 1500 bucks, I've already doubled it. That's freaking sick. Dude. In 45 days using, using imagine like in stocks, if you were like, I use a hundred shares max and I've doubled my account. How long is it going to take you to do that on the long side in small caps without getting lucky? I have well, not Joe, gotten that's... lucky in any of these trades. I have not made like tenfold on any of these trades. Well, and guys, I've that's, made the, that, that's tiny the whole reason why, that, that add up. That's the whole reason why I wanted to bring this up today, right? Is because you guys have to understand if you're in a service where they're only trading really, really, really big money, that's impossible to replicate, right? Like if you're trading, but your guru has a $4 billion account and you know, the P and L's are really sexy and they're big and they're kind of crazy. I mean, look, dude, it's like, that's not going to be relatable for like the little guy. Right. And like MIC was built, man, two and a half years ago to give every single trader, no matter who you are, a fighting chance in the markets. In fact, dude, we like, I would venture to say that we actually cater to more, even the little guy, because it's like, dude, even guys with $500 accounts, we have every single resource. And now that's why I really wanted to take attention and put it even to the options courses. You guys got to understand, man, if you have $500 and you want a fighting chance in the market, we hear that dude, that's what we're here to do. We're here to give everybody that opportunity. And that's why I'm like, guys, if I'm serious, man, if, if maybe small caps is not your thing or big caps, you just really just don't have the buying power. Cause I understand man, you really can't trade Netflix with a thousand dollars. Well, now you can with options. And that's why I wanted to even learn it myself. So I can help you Joe and more of like, like, dude, guys, this actually works. And this is why I like yep. it. And this is an alternative to learn or make money. It's like, if you guys have an opportunity where you want to make money or learn something, we are here to provide everything for you. That's why we're doing this. And that's why we did it. And, you know, like I said, Joe's results, the way he keeps it simple. Um, you know, we, we just, dude, we want e the goal of MIC is to get every single trader a fighting chance to make, not, not even just make a living at trading, dude, because everybody's promising you the Lambos and the flash and, and you could party with all the celebrities and influence. Dude, it's not about that. It's about, we want you to be able to supplement your income. So you're less stressed in your life to maybe one day. And a lot of our guys have to actually quit your job if you wanted to and make it a full-time living like Faye or, or Joe or so many people, Tom Diesel over the years. And, and the funny part is, is we actually tell them not to quit their careers. Just trade for an hour. Day Bro, I will say job. this going for, as, as someone that had a career and went full-time as a trader, I'm going to tell everybody that wants to do that right now. And I'm, I'm going to probably crush your dreams. Uh, it's the stupidest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. Supplement. Do not do not not quit. Do not quit your job. The goal in life is, and, and I know you all want to probably quit your job because you want to be free of the man, right? I agree with that 1000%. You know, you want to be free of the man. You don't want to be, you don't want to be anybody's bitch anymore. Can't blame you. I didn't want to either. But what you need to do is you need to take that capital 
that you have and start other revenue income streams. You can't just trade. You add some you drip can't to just life, trade. Some financial drip. Exactly. You have to have other streams of income. Me, I have real estate. I not only have sales on real estate, but I have rental income that comes in from there. And then on top of that, my wife works it, because what are we going to do? Sit on our fucking thumbs for all of 2020? Dude, no, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to go make something of my life. And, you know, I want to retire by the time I'm 40. Well, Sorry, Joe, guys, let me, Joe, but I ain't going to be an MIC in 10 years. Joe, I'll be let me say it like gone, this, bro. Let, retired. Joe, let me, let me give him a perspective <laughs> real quick. Guys, the reason why we say don't quit your jobs is because you can make double the income. Dude, we make all our money in literally like one hour a day, dude. We trade the first hour short and then zombie hour for like a good hour. Dude, longs have so much, actually longs really is like a cheat sheet into the markets, dude. They have the first hour and the fucking second hour. Like I'm jealous of longs, dude. They have more opportunity. But the point is guys, if you have full-time jobs, if you have jobs there in the morning, in the afternoon, we have a reversal hour, we have the opening morning, we have zombie hour, we have a timetable and strategies aligned to every timetable that no matter what your job is or your schedule, you can benefit in coming to MIC and learn how to make money. And that's why I even brought up the options. If you guys can swing month long strike price contracts and kind of let the money work for you. And here's the reason why Joe was just saying, don't quit your job. Say you get to the point and you will, a lot of people have. I mean, shit, man, look at our testimonials page. It's unbelievable, dude, how many. It's like overwhelming at times. Like, we're like, holy shit, dude. But the point is, is if you figure out how to like full on replace your income with trading, right? Trading an hour a day. See, it's the same money. Why wouldn't you just trade an hour, then go to your job? And then like Joe said, set up a vending machine business, set up real estate, set up some drip. It drip is called passive income. You get these little drips into all these passive income sources. And now you're actually making money when you're not doing fucking jack shit, dude. And I'm not even talking Start about like your own business. business, be your own fucking boss, be your own boss, be your own business. But dude, don't quit your job until not yeah. only can your, all your passive income pay your life and you got trade. Like if you're like, good, dude, like if you're good at building fences, then go fucking build fences and start a fence business. And eventually, eventually you're running four fence crews and you're the job foreman. And all you do is go appraise and then send out four different crews to four different job sites or five different job sites. And you're just bringing in additional, you're, you're becoming your own boss. You're using the market to leverage other things in your life. Dude, there's a million ways to do this, but you know, I, I, the the dream of quitting your job is, you know, don't quit your job to be a full-time day trader. This is the dumbest shit you'll ever do. Dude, it uh, really is because there's so and many it's a dead ways end to world. make money and supplement and do et cetera and this and that. I mean, dude, it, 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 like, it's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy how much opportunity there is. Dude, I worked, I've always had a job my entire life. Tosh, probably not. Maybe at a juice store. I'm just <laughs> no, I've always worked. Dude. I've always had a job. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, bro. I literally, bro, like it, like, it was crazy, man. My whole life, I, I'm 30 so for like 27 years, dude. And it was just, it was nonstop, dude. Even when I was trying Josh was at the original Smoothie King back <laughs> when there was mullets. <laughs> See, now I got to own smoothie places, man. See, that's the, that's the real goal, right? It's like open up smoothie shops now. Skinny jeans are expensive. Josh is not a word. <laughs> Dude, skinny jeans are hella expensive. Now I, I love it though. Every time I see like even like all the people, all my friends, dude, even like Val, like I know everybody's gravitating towards the skinnies, man. I'm telling you, it's a pandemic. Dude. It's an epidemic of skinny jeans, bro. I started that shit. Man, I if I if I wear skinny jeans, it just looks like two ham hocks tied up in a grocery bag. Two ham hocks. <laughs> <Like, laughs> Joe doesn't want to show off his poopa. <laughs> Dude, that is no nah, man. I got weird. one. I got one nut split on the left side. One nut split on the right side. <laughs> you know, my my legs all cramped up. I, you know, when I sit down, the fucking jeans slide up to my shins. Yeah, so you know, I'm like, I, I, can't do it. If you guys want the hookup at Lululemon, man, I got you. They got some great jeans, quote unquote jeans. <laughs> Lululemon sells jeans. No, dude, I'm kidding. Joe say, uh, Val's saying I can't tell if there's skinny jeans on Tosh or Lululemon. I'm like, well, don't tell, don't give away all my. Tosh secrets, doesn't man. wear pants, bro. He has painted on jeans. Dude, this shit real. gets painted on every day. He has an artist that stands there with a spray gun and like covers his nuts and then sprays. He just he just wears a jock strap that gets blended into his body. Dude, see now you're really giving away the secrets, bro. Now you're really giving it all away. <laughs> 
Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know, all those chicks on Instagram, they're like, <laughs> body paint. Dude, this is so mean. Man, Never over 40s. Game, bro. <laughs> Dude, that, that well, you know what's funny is that that build right there is like the reverse of me. Like my legs are like <laughs> fucking tree trunks. Like my legs are tree trunks. I can't fit in skinny jeans. Anyway, wait, wait, moving on. I got so, your build, dude. I got your build. Is, it, is this the is this the opposite? Me right there, right there. Yeah, that's me. See, see, this is Joe, and this is me. <laughs> Yes. Yes. That's so funny, bro. No, it's funny, man. Cause like in high school, dude, I used to work out a lot and I was actually kind of a big guy, but like, I never worked out legs, dude. So I literally look like this, man. I was like, never skip leg day. I always skip leg day. I hated leg day, but like my best friend, man, <laughs> 16 years, he is the opposite of this. So he's like, he's got like tree trunk legs that are buff, but his like body's small. <laughs> I'm like, Hey man, to each his own, bro. I just hated leg day, dude. I hey. hated it. <laughs> Chris, I've got a question for you. Since you live in the backwoods of Georgia, I got a question, and you may know the answer to this, but to those, to any of you that have lived in the country before or been been near it, why do people that wear like Wrangler jeans like why do they like pull their pant leg up above their at the top of their boot and then tuck it in? I know what it's for. Like, I know it's for when, when you ride horses. Uh, believe me, I grew up in the country. So it's for when you ride horses so your shit don't wear out and it doesn't pull or anything like that. But but when you're walking through Walmart with the fucking jeans in your boot, what are you going to do? What are people going to do? Like, do people just plan on, like, saddling up a fucking horse in the back of Walmart and ride off into the, the sunset? With it? <laughs> Bro, like, what are these people thinking? I was in there the other day and there was some dude with his boots tucked into his jeans on only the inside leg, like the inside of his pant leg was tucked into his jeans. And I'm like, dude, what, what are these, <laughs> what are these guys doing? It, it's like Sundance kid over here about to fucking, he's got his horse corralled out back of the fucking Dairy Queen and he's just gonna, he's just gonna cruise on out. It's like their version of a fashion statement. Yeah. I mean, I could see that, but dude, it's like, it is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Like, you had, pe these people don't ride a horse every day, let alone, they probably don't even own a horse. Paper and horse. Yet they're like tucking their fucking bootlegs in. Paper horse riders. Bro, yeah, they're paper horse riders. They're paper cowboys. They ain't nothing. <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway, moving don't on. Don't get Joe started on that, man. So I want to show everybody this. Pull up the Netflix calls. Can you do um, that? Let me see. Can somebody tell tell us what the I don't have thinkorswim open. I'm actually sitting here eating lunch. Um, can you tell us what the Netflix call tag is? I think right here, it's brother. like it's like dot NFL. Oh, there it is. So on the 600s, right click on those calls. Right here on the left. No left. Go left. Oh, the calls. And oh, then, the calls. See, yeah, I'm new right to this click, shit as well, man. Right click. 600 right, right here. Right click. Right click. No. Right click. What the fuck are you talking, dude? I'm on a laptop. Okay, copy. All right. Yeah, and then go to your chart. Paste. All right, guys, here's what I want to show you, the potential of options. This is just today. So go to your studies and let's remove this stuff because you don't need all this extra shit. Uh, one sec, wait. What am I removing? Blank chart. Yeah, just everything. Remove it all. Right? Yeah, remove everything. Even I'm getting a lesson. Time. There you go. All right, so... This is what happened at the open. <clears throat> so you can see that the $600 calls tanked right at the open. Okay, they gapped up massive from less than a dollar to 450. And then at the open, they washed out to a dollar 50. And then in seconds, in seconds, they were, I longed them at 260 and sold them at four bucks in a matter of seconds, like probably. 45 seconds is as long as I was in the trade went long at 260 sold them at four and I what is that percentage like so you 60 percent 70 percent and you're saying I mean, you 60 sold them right here at four bucks wow yes. yep and and then I rebought and I rebought them on the dip and risked a portion of what I made and then I had to stop out when it broke down but the point is I risked barely anything. How do you know 
how do you know to sell of the main stock or the options, the main stock chart? So I'm just looking at the underlying stock chart and I'm just looking at the bid and the ask on the options. So like when the underlying stock hits my lines, I just know what strike I want to buy. And so I buy that strike. And then when the stock bounces back into my lines, I sell my options. And the options have increased in value since that bounce, et cetera, et cetera. But um, so the, the, this trade lasted for literally, I swear to you, like 45 seconds, maybe a minute. I mean, I mean, I last longer in the bedroom than, I, than that trade lasted. And that's saying something. he thinks he does. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there some kind of automatic thing or do you do manual correlation trade? Um, there's no, there's no, uh, th so the correlation that you're asking about is Delta. So the Delta, uh, if people have probably heard that all Delta means is how much the option is going to move for every $1 move in the stock. The so if Netflix, security. yeah, if so, if Netflix goes from 560 to 561, my option will increase from two to 220. If the delta is twenty cents, we're well, just closer, using like easy numbers here, right? And the closer you get to your strike price, that thing just exponentially moves quicker and more. Yeah, and more. exactly. Now, if yeah, you can't use fantasy orders. No, no, you can't use fantasy orders. But um, I still add liquidity, so I still like when the stock is dropping. I will put my orders on the bid or like one tick below the bid so that I catch the panic and I catch that, that volatility and then I get the bounce, but you can't set fantasy orders. I wish you could, sometimes you can, um, but most of the time you have to kind of pay attention when you're entering, so yeah. But anyway, my point to this is, you know, it is this is the potential of this trade. Like I traded Netflix and it cost me less than a thousand dollars to make this trade. And I made whatever, whatever 260 to $4 is percentage wise. I think that's like 60 or 70%. I, in, in a matter of like a minute, 15 minutes into the market open and I'm done for the day. Like I was gone. I left, stop trading. After I bought the dip and took a and took a small and, and gave back uh, like I gave back like thirty percent of what I made, and and so I was like, and I'm gone. So I made one trade, made my money, tried again, and then had to stop out, and then I was done. I was like, that's a wrap. It's a sick day, right? It's super quick, man. It's super volatile. It's super quick if you time it right. And you know, like Joe always says, man, on on options, man, you don't want to do the day before the earnings, but the day after earnings or the day, you know. The day after earnings, man, it's super volatile, and you can get an expected move like Netflix did with the continuation that it had. So, dude, did I off. trade plug off of the sixty-four line, or were you too focused on? Yeah, I was too focused on Netflix, and I just made my money on Netflix, and so I was like, "All right, I ain't about to go start looking for more trades." Like, I start. I, that's kind of my that's my kryptonite is once I make my money, like I make my daily nut, I have a really hard time pushing myself. Uh, because you know, I got a wife, I got kids, I got bills, I got this shit. I start paying shit in my head with the money that I just made. And I start thinking, you know, what if I give it back? I don't want to give it back. Um, and so I, I'm just like, if the trade is not super clear to me, I'm just going to skip it like, and move on. That's brisket money, baby. That is brisket money locked in. I don't buy a fuckload of brisket. Let me tell you. Dude, listen to this. So there were such heavy winds in California yesterday. My buddy that lives in LA, dude, I don't know why this reminded me, but I'm on FaceTime with him. He goes, bro, look at this. They're 80 mile per hour winds, right? Dude, his three, Whoa. his 300 pound grill got thrown like a freaking dude, like a dandelion spore and broke to like 10,000 pieces, bro. His 300 pound grill just got wiped out. Wow. I was like, damn. So, For anybody in so LA. somebody asked. Son, man, Hope you guys stayed safe. Somebody asks, what's the usual risk percentage for options? <laughs> so for me, um, I use 50% uh, of whatever I buy. So the but, premium. Uh, yeah. So if the, pre if the cost of the option is two bucks, like I'm willing to take enough size in the option that I'm willing to let the option lose 50% of its value. Okay. That doesn't mean that's where my stop loss is all the time. That's where my max loss is. 
Now my stop loss, I base it some, most of the time I base it on the, the stock chart. So like Netflix, I'll base it on the stock chart. But sometimes when you're buying panic, I mean, you don't really have a stop. And so you just have to long it and size in according, knowing that you could take a 50% loss here in a blink of an eye. But let me tell you how many times that's happened. Uh, one in the last year that that's happened, that I lost like 50% in like two minutes. I mean, it's, it's happened one time. So, I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. It can happen if you let it, but I mean, <clears throat> just don't be an idiot. No, but that's the thing, that's the thing across the board of anything, man. Small caps can just watch the options boot camp and idiot. that shit's not going to happen to you. Dude, just watch the like, damn options boot camp. Yep. Yeah. Joe is a pure options trader, man. That's, that's the cool part. Um, dude, I've honestly stopped day trading. Like this was just a day trade for me. I will still day trade, but I'm not looking for it every day. I've actually been swing trading more, but I use options to swing trade. But I am 1,100% using options in my trading. I've almost – I haven't placed an equity trade in six months. Well, and that's the coolest part, man. It's like it's like you got to find what works for you, right? And like time schedule and stuff. And Joe was telling me, dude, it's like, look, he's got a newborn, man. He's got kids, man. He's got a family. It's so much easier for him to do that, right? Like if you wake up at a certain yep. time, et cetera, et cetera, and – I just I get the I, same I volatility that you get in small caps and I get it in large caps where I don't have to freak the fuck out constantly that the stock is going to drop on me out of nowhere. Like I can have confidence in holding these companies. Right. Correct. And I get the same volatility that I, that you can in small caps. Correct, man. Correct. For any of you guys who have watched the option course, what do you think about it, man? Do you like it? Like, like I want to get some feedback, man. Who's watched the option course? Seriously, I know I saw a couple of you guys say that you did like it, but like, what are your thoughts? JC man? JCMIC has. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. Wow. So you guys are wow. You guys are digging it, dude. I'm telling. I, I, I'm digging it, Joe. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. It's so simple to understand, man. The first one, just like you know what it is. I equate it to like this. Remember Game of Thrones, dude, like episode one or any major show that you start, you're like, all right, man, I mean, this is a lot of characters. Fuck, am I into this? Like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's, that's the first video, right? Like, you're like, all right, well, this is a lot to learn. It sounds super confusing. There's a lot of characters. Dude, by episode three, you're like, man, I know this shit. I know this shit. I'm starting to learn this. I care about this. I love this. This makes sense. This feels right. It's, it's just like any new show that you start. And it's good, dude. It pays off, man. And then, you know, you well, until the last season of Game of Thrones, then you're like, well, why? What the fuck? <laughs> last season of Game of Thrones was like a, like a blow up, a blew up account. <laughs> oh, bro. Last season of Game of Thrones was, oh, that was tragic. <laughs> yeah, dude. It need a 401k channel for real. Like a long-term investing. 90% uh, of my options trades are profitable. Dude, Claudio, that's amazing. And Claudio is having the run awesome. of his life right now. Um, it's great. I never I scroll up. I, I saw a couple questions that people had in here about options. Yeah. It says, uh, do you use right there down one you know, bonds question? Do you use weekly or the next week expiration options? I use weekly. Weekly. If I'm day trading, if I'm day trading, I use weekly. If I'm swinging, I use monthly. Well, Joe, you said that's right. You, you said if you're if you're day trading, you want this current week. But if you're swing trading, you want the months because it wouldn't make sense to do a day trade two weeks from now when the expirations are so far that your premiums are worth dog shit, right? Exactly. Yeah, and they're just not going to move as much. They're That's gonna exactly be slower. Right. Yeah, dude, you yeah, want liquidity. So Look, dude, you want you guys got to take what you learned in stock trading and apply it to options. If you do options, you want liquidity, you want volatility, you want movement, you want an expected move. You don't just buy an illiquid option and say, Oh, I think the stock price will go there. If nobody gives a fuck, there's no volume. There's no open interest. That's the thing that Joe had to like imprint in my head. All the people that lose at options are the gamblers of like, look, dude, I'm going to throw a gamble in 10 different options because they're cheap. And I think I, it'll go there. I'll make money. Well, nobody's into that dude. Even if it goes your way, where's the, where, where's the Delta? Where's the money? Like you're not going to get the fluid move you do. And because nobody's in those contracts and premiums, it's fun. They're, they're worthless, dude, if they pay you at all. Yep. So, so yeah, the, what I would recommend and people always ask this question, should I, should I start with options or should I start with small caps? It doesn't matter what market you start with. It matters the process you start with. 
the process right. of analyzing a stock chart means everything. You don't need to trade in order to learn. You need to learn to trade. And the only way that you learn to trade is you learn the MIC process of drawing lines, how to properly do it and not, and not do it the janky way like a lot of other places try to teach. Do it the way that we teach, okay? Learn these, make watch lists for yourself like I do. Put them, post them somewhere, write them in a journal, Fucking put them in your diary, tuck it under the other side of the bed, you know, whatever you want to do. But you have to start with a process and then you start with whatever instrument you want to trade. As long as you, if you have a process that makes money, it doesn't matter whether you trade Forex, crypto, options, futures, stocks, commodities. I, I, do, I really don't, it does not matter what you trade as long as there's a process. <laughs> Forex, huh? Alex Dude, is like, so I mean, there's hope? Bro, the, the lines work in Forex too. Dude, they do. I've never traded Forex, but just for the fun of it, I've drawn some lines in Forex. And I was like, that's a line, that's a line, that's a line. And I've just like went back and looked. I'm like bounced off my line, touched my I'm like, look at this shit. Fucking sexy. Joe, Joe in two months comes back to the next webinar. He's like, man, fuck options, dude. I'm neck deep in this bro, fucking no, Forex. Bro, no, I will never, bro, I will never go to Forex. I will never go to Forex because what's the, think about it. The Forex is the opposite of options. Options, the instrument is leveraged, right? What you're trading is leveraged. So there's more volatility. Forex, right. not leveraged at all, but they give you the ability to leverage yourself which is just like, it's the opposite of what you want to do. Like you have to put up more money on less money in order to make the tiniest fucking profit. It's the opposite of what you want to do. I want to spend less money in the trade and I want to make just as much as, if not more on anybody else. Dude, and here's the thing. Yeah, you Forex wanna... moves in that small. No, yeah, that's true. And they call it pips. It's so small that you have to use massive size to get any money out of it. What I want to do, bro, is I want to use 400 bucks and I want to make a thousand dollars. And you want to make 1200 bucks. Exactly, dude. Yeah. I don't want to use $40,000 and make $4. Dude. Like, and that's okay. what a lot of, dude, that's what a lot of guys are doing there. I mean, half of Twitter is like, I risked 4 backwards. to make so ass grand. backwards. That's so ass backwards, bro. So ass backwards. All that does is pay the brokers that loan out that margin. Right. That's all it does. That's all it does. And it's just, I'm like, I'm fucking, oh my God. This is it, good, dude. But it, <laughs> it text 2134. Oh, text <laughs> me funny. for Forex. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, dude. I don't know who puts themselves in fucking 24 seven market conditions as Alex said, dude, is if it wasn't stressful enough just to trade what we do every single day and be professional day traders. It's just like, yeah, I know, who would right? succumb to a 24 seven hour market, dude? <laughs> Yeah, I would never sleep. That's why I don't trade crypto is because I'm a, par I'm a paranoid motherfucker. Like if I had something that's trading in the middle of the fucking night and there was some kind of news across the world in China that affects Bitcoin and all of a sudden I wake up at, you know, 5 a.m. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, the last dude, I would be getting no sleep. Bro, the last thing you want to do is shit your trading diaper while you're asleep before you actually shit your trading diaper while you're trading in the morning. <laughs> like, Absolutely. I like that, so dude. just to summarize, summarize my my explanation is, is <clears throat> that you need to learn the MIC process. Most of the MIC process is is um is draw is is kind of was created around small caps but it's, it's transferable to any market and so it doesn't matter where you start like if you start in options you absolutely have to know how the large cap stock trades itself so at the end of it all you're going to start in stocks if you don't understand how the stock trades you will never understand how to trade an option right and you will literally just buy illiquid cheap shit thinking you're going to get rich quick and then you die and so, so that, yeah. Like Joe, this is also another thing I wanted to say. Guys, one of the things that we teach you at MIC, right, is exactly what Joe said. We want to risk 
the least amount of money with the least amount of stress to make the most amount of money, man. That's the beauty of outer lines, right? So like every day we're drawing our levels. This morning, man, the only expected move I wanted out of this was this. This is the expected move. All this shit is like, I'm gunning for the fences. I'm getting greedy. This was on the watch list this morning of Gevo, dude. Outer lines were the nine level. Alex was saying this all morning. That's the expected move. This didn't make it. This totally made it, but it did it more um, in the immediate open. You know, NDRA, expect outer lines, man. You're risking a lot less than what you can theoretically make on the move down, right? Even outer lines on this one. SD, like, this is the shit that we teach every day, man. And then OBLN, I was telling people, you know, stay away all day. The point is, it's like, are you using a $2 million account to make 50 grand? Or are you using like what Joe was saying? Are you using a $400 position in options to flip for $1,200, man? Sometimes even like 700% moves and maybe, maybe you get a $2,700 trade, whatever. I, you know, I'm, I'm even new to options. So Joe can definitely tell you better than that. But the point is we do this in small caps as well, guys, whatever size you use, we're willing to risk a little to make a lot. This is our whole teaching. This is why we do what we do is to make sure you guys are safe. Like that's what I'm trying to say here. So with the options thing, it's giving very small account guys the ability to now risk tiny micro micro money and actually make decent money, man. Imagine Joe, like how, cause I know in small caps, but like, obviously I'm more new to options. What would you say, dude, is like the amount of money they would need in their account to start supplementing their income, maybe 50 to hundred bucks a day in options. Literally. Like what, what do you think a good account size to do that would be? $1,500. $1,500. Did you get supplement your income, man? What do you guys make at a construction site? 100, 150 bucks a day and you work 14 hours and then your back is fucking broken by the end of it, dude? We're not telling most you. People, most people that try to like learn how to trade, most, speak, most have 1,500 bucks to trade with, right? Yeah, like seriously. Most of them, ha most have that money to trade. Oh, OBLN, death candle. Oh, okay. Offering? Is it offering? Let me see. Oh, that's what I wait for. Oh, shit. I'm tempted, Ooh, dude. Nice. Oh, nice. No, Look tempted. at the volume on it. I'm tempted, bro. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to wrap up this webinar right now. <laughs> no. No, I'm kidding, dude. I don't chase this shit because, guys, look how far above VWAP it is. That's a death candle, but, dude, look at this. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, that's not a – that's that's the waterfall. Bro, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, though. this is a great explanation, guys. guys. <laughs> a death candle is through VWAP. You have you have twice the amount of distance to VWAP, dude. This these are longs like Bao just said, committing suicide. But here's the thing, dude. I still I'm not comfortable with it. Like I wouldn't race into this or hit it on a pop right now because Taunted. dude, it's it's just no, nah, I'm good, dude. I'm good. Look how far above VWAP it still is. The size of the death candle, that's still the room to get to VWAP. Now, if this went from 1054 to freaking 640, dude, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm closing this webinar. I'm chasing my balls off. I'm hitting pops. But this is, this could be a trap in the making, dude. Especially because we're in the last hour of the day. This could be a full on trap. Don't get suckered, man. But that is nasty. Yeah, trading OBLN. Be like, damn. So the thing that I'm trying to say to you guys, and I want to make this very clear, because I like to say kind of like what our- Look what at that shit. Mission. Look at that. Look at that bounce right off the nine it's, line. It's crazy, Look right? At that. Like right there, dude. Right there, all this consolidation. Like just boom, right there, yeah. saved at nine. Let's see what it does. But guys, here's the thing, and I want to make this very clear. Because I always talk about the MIC vision, the MIC process, kind of what we're here to do. I am not here to make you rich. I am here to give you a fighting chance. And through consistency, it is your job to make you rich. I will teach you how to make $100 a day. And then the $100 a day blueprint goes to 1,000. The 1,000 goes to 10,000, whatever. The point is process and consistency is the ability to get rich. I will never tell you, oh, dude, I'm here to get you rich. I'm here to make you rich. No, dude, I am here to teach you how you can make yourself rich. And that's why, you know, Joe and I get on, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> I love it. And, and like, can hey, you make me like, rich? Shit, that I think Alex is just copying, pesting my text messages to him. I'm like Alex. I, I think you're good, dude. <laughs> Alex, you're good, bro. The point is, guys, is we're not. Alex, is, make Alex, is, Alex will be like, Nah, man, I'm good when I'm I'm good when I'm talking about I'm, when I'm having these webinars from a private jet. 
that I <laughs> yeah, own Alex on my fucking, own dude, he, that I own on my own landing strip. Alex is halfway to if he's right now and he's texting us, can you make uh-huh. me rich? Bitch, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> The landing strip sounds nice. I'll bet yeah, it does. Yeah, I know what. Yeah, I bet it does. I bet it does. We all know oh, the money. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> save that for, save that for uh, after the market closes. Yeah. I'm sure you can find plenty of those in Miami. Oh, shit. That's, a, that's quite a thing in Ibiza, I hear. <laughs> Look at this thing, Wick on nine, bro. Look at this thing, Wick on nine. I will literally. I'm gonna. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna laugh, and I will openly laugh if this shit goes right back to highs so and everybody just so shorted good. that shit. Guys, that's a hole and half dollar number. Not only is it yeah, week. You, you guys can't be doing that, man. You guys Y'all, can't chase this like, shit, dude. I'll bet you uh, this. This totally uh, looks like a trap, dude. This looks like a short trap for sure. Absolutely. Look at that wick <laughs> off a of nine like, and then just stalls. Oliver's like tomorrow, probably 20s. I'm like, dude, this shit freaking right. gaps up overnight. We'll see freaking 30. <laughs> Come here, comedy and training class. Yeah, dude. One day uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a video session. Joe will show you his assless chaps. Dude, I'm telling you right now, when, when I see a guy – you know, that reaches out to me. He's like, Hey, talks, I got a 1500 account, $1,500 account. What can I do? I want to trade big caps. I go, look, man, big caps might be a little bit of a stretch for you until you get more money just because buying power truly is a roadblock for you. But that's why we got options, man. I, we listen to you guys every single day. We listen to the general consensus of suggestions, what you need, how to make our community better. And this is why I'm even trying to learn options and help Joe, dude. It's like, I want to help you guys get to that level of supplemental income because maybe you don't resonate with small caps. Maybe you don't resonate with big caps. Maybe that's going to be the underlying factor that gets you where you need to go in the markets, right? So there's In so my opinion, if you, have, if you have a small account, you're doomed in small caps. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, and it's probably bad publicity, but you're doomed. I'm sorry. It's the reality. Yeah, elaborate I have, on how small. I honestly, I have more interest in helping people find the right market to trade with, with their account size and their personality than I do about getting more subscribers to MIC. I don't well, care about dude, that. You do I realize- care about the people that are here already growing from there. And here's the point. Here's the point, guys. Like when it comes to small size, like, hey, Tosh, I have a $2,000 account. Would MIC benefit me? Look, dude, I tell people all the time, look, man, you might want to save up a little more for trading, but that's trading. You can come into MIC, bro, with an annual membership and learn everything for a year while you go grind at your job, save 5K, come back. And dude, by the time you have that money, you have put in a full fucking education on how to trade, pay for trade the whole time while you're building a real account and getting the money. But you now have the education first. And at the end of the day, dude, MIC is a university, dude. This is like college of trading, bro. So when it comes to learning material and learning how to make a full-time living or even practicing on a paper account with real traders doing this, man, side by side and guiding you and helping you with your training wheels on, that is absolutely priceless. And you know, so like yep. when someone comes to me and they're like, dude, I've got $2,000 to my name. I'll come to MIC when I have more money. I got to trade this. I'm like, bro, that, that, that's like, that's like, I, it's just the most backwards thinking in the world. You're going to go gamble that money away. Then when you have no money, come ask us for help and education. It's like, dude, do you know how many people over the years have joined a service that Bao has warned them about? lose all their money at said service then have no money and come back to bow and say can you help me can you educate me it's like dude what the fuck man we're nice guys yeah, but it, bro. it's that's that's what that's what i've tried to um that's what i'm trying to say is it like bow just said there the process is similar for small caps options uh, and large caps the point <clears throat> is that it does not matter how much money you have. Don't not join MIC because of how much money you have or don't have. The purpose is to join and learn a process because I don't care if you have a $100,000 account or a $100 account. If you have no process, you might as well just donate that account to a charity because then at least it'll go to a fucking good cause. Yeah, you because might you're get about some good karma in that regard. <laughs> You're about to donate it to the market. If you do not have a process, you're about yep. to donate it to the market. Yep. 
it does not matter what you trade, whether it's small caps, options, large caps, I don't care. Equity, stock, futures, commodities, I don't care. It doesn't, the crypto, I don't care. If you don't have a process, if you have no process whatsoever, just, just take that account and just hand it over to somebody that's going to make good use of it at exactly. some, you know, like an animal shelter. Dude, like I'm going to tell you right like now. That. Yeah, seriously, man. Just light the $100,000 on a YouTube video on fire and actually yeah. get a million people watching. Right. You get some, like, dude, get some kind get, of use yeah. out of your thrown away I mean, money. you might get yeah you get the, the affiliate ads you know you could do something with it but you get the I mean, youtube revenue <laughs> yeah i mean but that that's the purpose is you got to know the process it doesn't matter whether you trade small large or options it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's process, all about process, how process, you process. analyze you analyze a stock chart how you analyze a stock chart is everything guys once you have the proper lines it doesn't matter what you trade small Dude. This caps, is, trade small caps all you want. If you want to trade options, trade options all you want. Guys, this is why every single day, man, we draw our lines and 75% hit perfectly, 25% don't. We narrow down the ones we like, the process, the outer lines, the death lines, the first bounce. Like, dude, this is what process looks like. In fact, my charts look almost identical every single day for those who know my, my specific process, which falls under the category of the MIC umbrella process of outer lines pivot points, broken stocks get weaker, strong stocks get stronger. The reason why basically none of us traded on the short side OBLN today is because dude, this was the strongest one saying don't fucking short it. This was the long opportunity while all of these schmucks got slaughtered after the tops were in. That's the point. And if you man. shorted OBLN today, shame on you. Fucking well, if, shame on you. Well, guys, if, I have if, I have I have a question for those that shorted out OBLN today. Are you a one. member of MIC? <laughs> No, I asked them, how dare you? Oh, how, how dare, dare you? you? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? I, because the point is, is that if you're a member of MIC, Alex warned about this at the open. He says, I'm not focused on this stock. I am not focused on this stock. I am not focused on OBLM. Maybe 13 times he said it. But I guarantee you there's still people in here that tried to short it and lost money. And the only reason why they tried to short it is because they were like, fuck, I already located shares, but now Alex is telling me to avoid it. I've only got one stock to trade today. I've already yeah, located shares. So I don't want to waste right? the money. Yeah, I mean, I've already yeah. don't want to waste the money. I got to make a trade. I got to find something. I got to get my money back. And, and I mean, yeah, go Guys. ahead and just smack yourself. Dude, in the morning, what did I say all morning? I said, this is not a stock, dude, that is either A, broken or has the kind of meat that I want to see on the proverbial, you know, steak bone, right? Like you want meat or you need a death candle to fucking slam. No death candles, just a nice stuff candle. I stayed away from it, stayed away from it, teeter around VWAP, <coughs> hovers, hovers, makes love to VWAP, make it out, boom. This is your tell. Volume comes in, matches the open. Oh shit, now you're really in trouble. Dude, this is not something you want to short. Not enough meat, holds, hugs VWAP, volume comes in, breaks pre-market high of day, that is the final fucking like test of dude is not short. And then bingo off to the races. You dumb, you dumb, you dumb, uneducated. If you shorted this all day. So again, yep. guys, we're blunt. We're blunt because we actually want you to succeed. We never ever take any kind of joy or satisfaction in one side losing money. Dude, we are a trader. Uh, we are a trading community based on half longs and half shorts. Meaning, I take joy in the other side losing money. Dude, if I'm on the other side, no one ever <laughs> takes joy of when one side loses money. We give it time. If this is a long, I'm not wanting Harry to lose so I can bank on the short. I'm letting him have his time in the sun until maybe I get a death candle, you know, through view up. And now it's my time. That's the whole point, guys. Or you can just know. focus it, on all the broken ones. If me and Harry entered at the exact same time, I would absolutely want him to lose money. If I was short and he was long, I would absolutely want well, him to lose money. Well, you would I'm if you sorry, at the exact but, same average. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but there's time. <laughs> the point is, guys, the point absolutely. is when you have process, both sides can prosper. That's the beauty of what process is. Yes. And that's the beauty of actually understanding a stock chart versus just having a private agenda of I'm accumulating, accumulating, accumulating a long position. I want all these freaking shorts to lose those freaking losers. I'm going to squeeze them all. That's not, that, dude, that's not, that's not what real trading is, man. Now, when we say that, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, my God. I just went deaf. Wow. Oh, was that loud? I couldn't tell. That was super fucking loud. My bad. All good. Uh, Laser wants to talk pot so, stocks. What you got? Uh, real quick. Real quick before we talk about this. What's <laughs> funny What's funny to me is OBLN, right, is up like what, like 300% today? Uh, something like that. 400? Yeah. Where are we at? Jesus Christ, 482. Yeah, this happens like once a week in options. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Joe's this like, happens like once a week. I get 700% once a week. Bro, it's it, – dude, it, nobody has faith in longing these setups because we all know where they go back. But large caps, you get this same type of big volatility – and it's a real fucking company that you can long Correct. and have faith in. Correct. Like Netflix today, you could have bought the auctions as low as a dollar. You're probably not going to get it. Let's say you bought them. Even if it, let's say you did buy them at a dollar just to, just to make it really drastic. Right. This one, remember they are now trading at six bucks. Guys, one and you to have two, to, and, two and you to have three, to understand. three to four, four to five, five. To, it's a 500% move. Well, and Joe, let's, let's really like explain this, what this is for people who are just truly don't understand. And Guys, let me rephrase like that. Trading Netflix today. That's 500% intraday, not overnight. That's no, but, 500% but I mean, intraday. I mean, Joe, let's go to the absolute basics. Guys, this is the option and the premium that you're trading of Netflix. This is like trading Netflix today, but it's two and four and seven dollars. That's what we're trying yeah. to say to you guys. You're trading Netflix through this. Yep. Like, people and, don't get and so it's, it's just an instrument. You just use this instrument to profit. The same way you would profit from a stock chart, Correct. you use this instrument to trade that and get the bigger gains Dude, in risking sick, less money. How sick is that, man? It's, and so it, that's what, that's what uh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, so do you guys have any small cap questions? We can delve into small caps. We can delve into whatever you guys want. We just kind of want to introduce options today because it's something – it's just, it's just unbelievable, man. But let's talk, let's talk. Do you guys have any questions about small caps? What ran today? Like, but I let's mean, talk. let's, let's think about, let's think about OBLN too. What's the lessons on OBLN? The same fucking thing we've talked about 8,000 times. No, that's my point. How many times have we regurgitated the lessons <laughs> that OBLN is teaching us today? This a fucking, two, for two years, we've talked about OBLN lessons. Yeah. Type oh, of and trades. by the way, we talked about this fucking shit for two years. By the way, I mean, guys, it's like, at this moment, People thought a top was in there. Like, no way this will break high day. Did at this moment, people shorts yep. chase and didn't. Uh, where are we right now? We're on a dip that could do the same. That's why you don't just enter like an idiot and have no plan of attack. It just held that nine line. After this stuff candle, it's still holding. So again, man, we teach you this, dude. There are ways to stay safe. Can you get a trade out of this? Sure. But what's your odds of success, dude? It's the last hour of the day, which is never good for shorting. You're placing a short trade right here on what could be a consolidated dip before longs. Just come in, bring the volume up through the roof that matches these levels. Then you're off of the races to 15. Gap up after hours 20, and you wake up tomorrow. And as Oliver said, you're at $30, and you just wanted to get a nice scalp from 9 to 8, and you're a bag holder, and you blow up your account. Welcome to the dangers of anything, but most importantly, fighting trend. If we teach you yeah. one thing at MIC, you don't fucking fight trend, man. Uh, Jivo, want to want to recap? What I'll Jivo? say, I'm Can just glad I get the chance to finally use these videos in my trading memes. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> so, look at Jivo. Jivo, Jivo, Jivo. This is what uh, this is this was my lines this morning. And what here, what are we talking about here? Real quick, real quick. Gbo on the short side. Okay. Before we do, I can't remember. The, yep. Oh, hello from the watch list this morning from Alex. This had an offering as well, but notice the difference. Short of pop. Eight. So I will short be looking towards nine. to wow. shorty pop towards nine if we get it on an SSR bounce. For those who are not familiar with which me and Joe regurgitate every single day, when a stock opens up or above or just below and kind of hugging VWAP on the open, you got to use outer lines. What are outer lines? Where the previous tops were. Hey, hole and half dollar number coupling factor. Boom. Maybe this is the top line that you'd want to risk. I don't know if you'd want to risk a full dollar, but this is the scale zone. And by the way, nine coincides with this previous top. And guess what we get in the morning? Off 
the watch list like every single day. They can pay your membership in a nutshell. A pop to the outer line of nine, fail, break into nearly eight, and that's it. Base hits every single day, dude. That's your expected move. So the guy that wanted us to review that, what happened in your training? What happened? Oh, that's a great – yeah, that's a great – yeah, let's – that's great. Why Why was it a loss? What What turned – what what – what made that a loss compared to the rest? Uh, yeah, Tim, let us know, man. I got in, got in okay, early. So you got in too early, okay. bro. Okay. Well, there, there. I mean, there's your answer right there. I mean, you I mean, got I mean, to check your discipline. If Tim, Alex I, is saying the nine line, it's nine line. Tim, I'm not sure so, if you're reading these every single morning, but uh, and not to single you out, brother, just anybody who's not reading these <clears> in the morning or watching the video that sometimes accompanies this, dude. I mean, it yeah. was, bro. It was. It, we laid it out, bro. It was the nine line. Yeah, it, it's it's right there, and it's not. It, I mean, I mean, you openly said I lost on it, and hey, that's fine. If you can openly say I took a loss on this, you are absolutely one step closer to being a profitable trader. If you yeah, can you have be no ego. real, yeah. If you can be real with yourself and not get offended by by some current by some constructive criticism, maybe it can sound a little harsh. But I mean, if you don't. Uh, Never mind. I'm not going to say that. Well, uh, Joe, I'll, if, I'll give a good comparison. I'll give a good it, comparison. It, Joe, Joe yeah, let me it, give a good comparison and put myself on the cho chopping block. Dude, I called up Joe the other day and he did a 50 minute screen share with me. Cause I'm like, bro, I just watched your first four episodes of Boot Camp. Obviously I don't know much about options. Can I ask you every single question in the book? But here's the, here's the benefit. I'm a beginner in options, but also I have seven years of small cap and big cap, you know, price action knowledge, and I know how to trade those and I do those well. So the point is, it's going to be a lot easier for me because I have the foundation of how a stock moves, which that really is the first part. But dude, you have to understand, I'm even admit, I'm sucking up my ego and going, dude, I, I'm, I may have to do just one contract for a month while I learn options because it's actually a very different language. And even the executions are very different while I get up to speed. Again, everything is the elimination of ego, man. I'm not a big options player yet. I'm a small cap trader, a big cap trader, and a swing trader in more of an investing style when it comes to indexes. But dude, I'm new to options. I have to suck up my ego. And I got on the phone with Joe the other day. I said, teach me, young. Teach, I'll be your Padawan, man. Fucking teach me, dog. <laughs> so that's, that's the whole point, man. So Jivo, the – I want my ego sucked. <laughs> uh, so Jivo, we all? The, the, um, the lesson here in your trade, Ten, is, is, the, <laughs> is the lack of discipline in the trade and not waiting for the lines. Which Correct. is, you can fix, you can fix. Correct. I mean, it, it's, it's this recognition that I got in early. Okay, fine, don't do it on the next trade. You know, you know now. Hey, you know, that, that's the only way you learn is you, is you have to lose. You well, have to well lose. you know what it is? At this point, at this point, Tim, if you knew the line, man, it's literally, bro, it's just discipline. We always say all the time to be a successful, profitable, 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 more so than successful, just, just the, 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 the idea that I'm a profitable trader, bro, it takes discipline. We're not the smartest guys in the world, but we know nine is the line because this has come yep. down big. It needs a nice jump. It's opening on VWAP. That's the whole and half dollar number. You shouldn't be getting in here right here, bro. That is a FOMO trade. It's got to come up to this resistance point. This, the volume is stuck right here. So you've got to wait for that, man. You got to wait for that, bro. Yep. And, and also, this trade honestly the, probably would have been kind of hard because if you, um, Yes, the pivots are the. Oh by the my way, God! Look at that pivot point. By the way, this is Tin. If you're having any trouble, bro, like just not to single you out, man, just anybody. If you're having any trouble with discipline, man, or forming your own opinion, I'm saying, like, dude, use Alex's watch list as a guy. But where's the pivot, bro? On day two, low hangers, you use pivot lines. Where's the pivot? Boom. That just solidifies your nine line. Yeah, and I didn't even look at pivots today, dude. That's how much it solidifies your nine line. Like, I literally did. That's the first time I saw the pivots today. This trade, honestly, would have probably been kind of hard to, to, like, easily do because when you hit the nine line, you're going to be probably shorting it at, like, 897, something like that. But, <clears throat> you know, where, where do you stop out in this case? That's the question you have to ask yourself. For me, um, I don't really see a clear stop until 10. 
Yep, that's what I was saying, Joe. And so, I always give myself to the next top. I give top yeah, to top. These were the ping pong tops. I would have had to size in on this, like at nine, with the understanding that it could go to 10. And now look at look at the closer on the intraday level. Sorry, bud, one sec. All good. And like, look at when it pops into nine. And you'll see this, when it pops into nine, then you get the big wick on the on the first pop into nine. You talking about this? Right there, yeah, 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 yep, yep. So when you short it into that nine bucks right there, and you get that big wick on the next candle that the dip gets bought up. If you haven't taken anything off, I mean, you're going to panic because it's going to squeeze to a new, it's squeezing to a new high of the day. And you're like, shit, I'm going to have to stop out full size. Not, I don't know where I'm going to get in. I don't know what I'm going to do. So if you didn't take anything off on that dip um, and the dip's not that big, what is it like 10 cents? Yeah. You make like 10 cents. Um, <laughs> 10 cents on a $9 stock is, I mean, that's kind of shitty, but I mean, just to be a hundred percent with you, but 10 cents is 10 cents. If you can easily make 10 cents, well, I can take it. Um, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make is if it breaks to a new high of the day like that, and I've sized in with the understanding that, Hey, I'm, I can, I can take this size up to 10 bucks and I can lose that dollar and be okay with it. But once it shows its hand and it shows this stuff, you see the stuff move, it breaks to the new high of the day and gets stuffed right there. That's when you got to whack it. You got to whack it right there and you got to move your stop down to a new high of the day. Super tight stop then, super tight stop and you got to whack it. And then, and then your goal is VWAP to cover it. Sexy man, so expected then, move. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the initial trade is like, I've got a super fucking wide stop. So, God damn, Val. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the stuff moved back into that. That's when you have to, that's when you have to size in. You have to get rid of the dollar risk and then you have to size into the trade at that point and tighten the stop loss. And then your risk reward vastly improves. Because people are going to be like, well, when you initially get a new trade, why are you risking a dollar? That sounds like terrible risk reward. That doesn't mean I'm going to have a fucking dollar worth of risk the entire trade. Like, I'm just sizing in in the beginning to get an entry. And then I let the chart form while still keeping my risk intact. Bingo. Bingo. Any more questions, guys? Any more questiones? Oh, did somebody say, uh, what was the other one? C uh, CLBS. Somebody asked CLBS. So CLBS, again, again, man, in the morning, I drew my outer lines, right? This is what I do every single morning. Where's the top? Top, top, top. Here's my scale zone. I am only want this, dude. When you're not going to get when you get your base hit, bro, you got to take it. This is the expected move. You get like one to two of these a day per ticker, if that, man. And it's usually one. So this is the outer line. Cover the VWAP drop. Like Joe just said, when you see exactly, bro. So here's the thing. When you, uh, nice, pal, very nice. Um, then when you get too greedy, this happens a lot, man. And we are in a market where things zombie, man. So after that expected move, bro. You are at risk for getting totally squeezed because we're in a market where a lot of volume's coming in. And remember, I'll give a, I'll give a nugget away real quick, but for those who are listening or lucky, what did me and Harry talk about all the time? But Harry simplified it so perfectly this week. There's not much volume pre-market. You know what that means? It's a little bit fake, fake, quote unquote, fake. Bro oh my God, spy all time highs? Fuck me. So this is, a, this is a little bit fake broken, guys. So when you have a little bit fake broken with not much uh, pre-market volume, you have to use outer lines, man, because if these things really get traction, this is why they break and fucking go, dude. So if I'm shorting anywhere in here, I'm covering for that base hit, and that's all I want, dude. Joe, let's check. Let's take a look at your at your watch list. Real quick, really quick on CLBS before we do that. If you don't understand volume, me and Tasha have talked about this a million times, and Harry's talked about this. But if you if you don't understand volume or how to read it. 
um, look at this. When it is pre-market, what is it doing? Fucking what do we call that? Ping pong. What do we call that? It's a 50-50 VWAP yep. move. There's yep. no edge. There's no edge here. There is absolutely no edge here. And so it, it's, it means, you know, you, you can't fucking, you can't take this trade. It means the only trade that you have that is borderline semi-comfortable is an outer line. But yep. brother, if you get that outer line, you better be covering for the expected move base hit. That's about yeah, you it. You got to be super quick. You got to be quick. super quick because this is what happens. This is what happens. You go, oh, dude. Okay, boom. Now it's under VWAP right here. Wick, boom, reclaim, you're done. While you're trying to get greedy and ride this to three. You got to be like bow in the bedroom, minute man. <laughs> you got to be like bow. <laughs> You gotta be a they didn't. Punk. They, they didn't just have Minutemen in the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Dude, two pumps and you're out, man. Strike one, strike two, and out of the ball game, bro. All right, where are we at, Joe? Let's talk about your watch, watch list. list every single day, buddy. Um. I mean, what do you want to talk about? I mean, uh, it's, Joe, you uh, know, uh, those, those are the lines. I just, every day I put, I put out a watch just list. Showcase it. Yeah, every day I put out a watch list for large caps, and those are the lines. And whether you trade, whether you trade equity or whether you trade options to trade those lines, that's all that matters. And so this morning I said Netflix over 576 is a big continuation trade. Um, it stuffed it. It stuffed 576 at the open once it – it had that rally, but it, you know, consolidated for the rest of the day and then finally made the move. I didn't catch any of the rest of the move. I just caught the open. So, um, but then it was plug. So plug was a scalp trade. Um, it was like a first bounce. So if you draw a line at 64. One sec. So if you bought the dip to 64 right off the open, it bounces – from 64 up to like 65.50 in, you know, minutes. And so that's a dollar and a half straight out of the gate, and then you're done. Uh, what's SPCE doing? Space? Let's take a look. Got him. Fucking 31 line. Look at that shit. Look at that shit, bro. Look at that shit. Look at 31. Dude, Look crazy. at 31 at the bottom. Crazy. Right there. 31. Crazy. Fucking 31. Yep. 31, and we're all the way up here. 32, 30 now. By the I way, mean, guys, potential long. Uh, 31, 30, 50. And then Put your pivots all of on. these are long trades. Yeah, exactly. Put the pivots on and fucking look at it. I mean, what do you think Joe was why, did I choose, why did I choose 30, 50? Well, look where the S1 pivot is. I mean, it's just, it fucking goes right with it. So, uh, LAC, L-A-C. Um, this, this company, they, they had a big move yesterday and then they fucking wrote a proposed offering right into it, uh, for $22. Their proposed pricing is $22 a share. So I said, I would avoid this until we get some further news. So like, I, I didn't want to take this as a long, I didn't want to take it as a short. I just, I just wanted to avoid it, but I put it on there because it was a big percent gainer yesterday. And so I knew a lot of people were probably going to be watching it. Uh, but for me, it was a no trade. Uh, what GM do? Uh, GM had a bunch of upgrades. Uh, so I said 54 and Damn. 52. Eh, line never touched. So yeah. no trade. And it's they're not always going to touch. And then PLTR, last one. Hey, you love PLTR. I fucking love PLTR. I Look at this. Really do, Look at this 26 line, bro. Look at this fucking 26. 26, line. baby. Where's the pivot? Look at this shit. Right there. Look at this shit. Why do you think we God, say dang. pivots actually work better in big caps, dude? And uh, like PLTR, you know, the pivot point at 26, uh, it, it, that helps everything. But, you know, the first line was 26.50. So right off of the bat, if you draw a line at 26.50. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you draw a line at 26.50, you can see the first time that 26.50 is touched right at the open on that washout, it bounces from 26.50 to 27. Boom. 50 cents right out of the gate and you got to be selling into VWAP and selling into the mid. I mean, this, this is that scalping 101. It's taking the quick profits off of the bounces of these lines. And dude, in a matter of, I mean, minutes, 
you've made three, <laughs> you've made three or four dollars a share on a combination of three or four different stocks. I mean, you do that with a hundred shares in each trade, and you've made three, four hundred bucks, easy. Dude, take my like, money. That's compounding son. gains. That's compounding gains. Now, if you use options, I mean, you could do, you could use even less capital and make the same, if not more, money. Yeah, and the options are probably trading at two and four dollars, dude, not twenty-seven. Yeah, and again, I'm just using options as a as 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 just as a vessel. An instrument that I it, yeah I just use that to trade the underlying stock. Only reason is because they're leveraged, and I want to make bigger profits on a smaller move. So that that's all I'm doing. I'm not I'm not overly focused on you know it's an option. It's an option. I've got to worry about expiration. I will never let that shit run to expiration. I'm going to flip it in. I'm going to, I'm going to imagine like when in the office, when Dwight bought Andy's Xterra for, you know, like seven grand and then turned around the same day and flipped it for 10 grand. Like that's what I do with, in, with options every single day. It wasn't that I wanted to own an Xterra. I wanted to flip the Xterra. I don't want to own these fucking shares. I don't want to own these fucking options. I want to flip them for a higher price intraday. Well, and that's and that's got that's why guys we say, you know, with OTCs like the way options trade or even small caps, you don't invest in companies like this, dude. This is not buying the spy that pays you dividends for the next 30 years and goes up with 10% appreciation on an average return. We're not talking yep. about really good companies. We're not talking about Google. We're talking about vessels, man. You don't invest because of decays and things like that. Or it's just like OTCs or small caps, man. You're not investing for the long haul. You're using them for the price action that they provide. So you're flipping yep. the premiums. Just like your dude, when Harry Haas is probably all over OBLM first bounce and stuff, he's not looking to ride this for the next 10 years. He's like, dude, I can, this is a very strong stock. I can get an expected move to the upside on bounces. Wow, that was actually um, that was actually a nice little nine fail right there. Let's see what this does. But um, the point is, is it's just like it's just like trading a security. But it, there's going to be many, many, many different kind of pros, especially if you're a small, you know, account, small guy. You're just getting your beak wet, and it's just again, man. There's options within options. <laughs> there's just ways to do everything. What do I think of BA? <laughs> what do I think of Boeing? What do you think of that? Uh, I have no opinion on that, bro. It's just trade the lines. Draw your lines. Draw your lines. Draw your wow, lines. Look at, Draw look your at lines. How much where, this where just is kept, look at this ceiling of a resistance pivot. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, you got to draw your lines. You can't ask me a question about what I think about it. You got to draw your lines. Yep. I have no you opinion, on, but process, I have no opinion on Boeing. No opinion on Boeing because it just doesn't even, it doesn't matter. Draw your lines and follow your lines and that's it. Guys, the first, the first part of becoming a trader of any sort, especially a professional trader or somebody that really wants to do this for a living, supplement income, you know, make a full-time living, is you got to understand what a process is. And then you got to trust it, man. So once you have one, I mean, this game is, Val told me a long time ago, I never forgot it, man. This game is as much art as it is a science, man. If you're feeling like you really got to stay away from the stock, sometimes you actually have to really trust that, man. Like you have to trust yep. your process. So much comes down to, dude, I knew that was the line. I should have taken the line. Why didn't I do it? Well, because, bro, you didn't have confidence in the line. You need to trust your yep. process once you have one. And then once you have, you know, risk management set in place with hard stops that kind of automate how much you can lose – Bro, you're off to the races and then you just scale up your skills and scale up your positions if you see a level of consistency that's really good or time frames. But again, man, it starts with the art form of process. Do you even have one? Get a process and then really, you know, I, I've actually, Joe, I've been telling a lot of people this lately uh, for anybody because, you know, every now and then we'll get someone who totally understands process, but dude, they're really scared. And I said, dude, you don't need to read any more trading books. You know what you need to fucking read? a fearless book, a book on overcoming fear that has nothing to do with trading. You now actually have to listen to podcasts and read something that will combat fear, dude, and learn yep. how to trust the universe, your lines, your job, your spouse. Like these things are going to show up in mirror in your trading, man. Yep. Awesome. So Bond says, I see the 200 line for Boeing. Perfect. It's a whole dollar it's a potential support. So what is your plan now? What's your plan for Boeing? What are you going to do? Are you going to trade it at these levels way above your line or are you going to wait for your line? Yep. Are you going to keep like Boeing? We were telling Tim, you know, once yeah. you have are you going to keep Boeing on watch? 
Are you going to keep Boeing on watch for several weeks now? And when it touches the 200 line, you're going to buy the dip? Or are you going to draw a 200 line right now? And then just because it's trading over support, you want to start buying all these little higher lows and scalping these little trades? Or are you going to wait for your line? Dude, an what idiot do? with a plan can beat a genius without a plan, bro. Absolutely. And 210 is a new idiots. line? <laughs> is 210 a line? I don't know. Is 210 a line? On you the daily? have to. I have no idea. You have to figure out what line works with your process. That would not be a line yep. for me because I don't trade Boeing. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the thing that I look for, right? Go to the and daily chart. Look at like a six month. Look at a six month? Let's see what I got. I got a year for you. That's fine. Hey, let me take off 220. the Let me take off the pivots. Oops, one sec. Oh, good. There we go. Pivot's gone. Um, 200. 200 comes yeah. down big time. Yeah, I don't see I don't see 210, and here's why I don't see 210. I'm going to point this out. Here, I'll just draw and it for the sake of the argument. 210. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, for the sake – I mean, I can kind of see it a little bit there, uh, but the reason but why I don't like 210 is because is – is the margin set by 10 over here? Nope. Are they going by 10 or are they going by 20? When you zoom in, they're going by 10. So you have to use it on a smaller time frame, and your, and your plan is going to change based on that. So it, it matters what it what – it, so I always go to a one-year chart because I feel like that gives me the best, like, big picture. There you go. And then I just look at the margins. Yep, 20. So 180, 200, <laughs> 220, 240, 260, 280. Yeah. So that means that's where I'm going to draw my lines. I'm going to be like, all right, you know, 200, I see the 200 line clears day at 200 to 240. So big picture, we're stuck in a channel between 200 to 240. Been Absolutely. with MIC for a month now, green every day, but one, understand the line, set hard stops. Not only does MIC teach a process, they support you every step of the way, the real deal. Thank Guys, you. Guys, I mean, what more can be said? Like, seriously, what more can be said about that? That's a real testimonial. That's, that's, yeah that's awesome like what more can, that's freaking awesome and by the way girl Perfect. straight too man <laughs> so come on in uh -huh. you don't just have to be a dude i know it outweighs like there's like 90 percent of traders in this industry feel like dudes so women can trade too man yq gapped big today all right let's take a look oh shit i know it's Daniel. Oh, that's yeah. That's not a gap. That's, that's just, just a big news. squeeze. That's, so I mean, I mean, but that's great volatility to be able to trade for sure. Yeah, so, gap I mean, would be like, but yeah, you know, not a gap up here. Just a squeezer. Yeah, just a squeezer. So, it's just like a PR squeeze. I mean, but you can you can draw your lines absolutely off of that. So if you see that big squeeze at the open, start start drawing your lines and buy the higher lows and if you guys I mean, need to make is, it really simple on yourself do do pivots if you need to and the first pivot i see is if this came back down to uh 1341 that's probably where i'd look along <laughs> yeah because it's 1340 or something i would have said 1350 yeah buy that buy that back to 1350 um you probably didn't get it and so look at a one-year chart And then, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, it's a recent IPO. The only other line I see is like, is like 15, 15. The line, line I've been looking 16. to sell, dude, is, a, is like right here at this 20, man. If I was long this from like, say like an investor standpoint, like, I don't know if I can, you know, I get an entry at 14 or something. I'm a real big swing trader like Claudio. Dude, I'd be looking yep. to take, I'd be looking to take off a lot right here, man. This, these are very yep. important. These are previous tops, man. This is a very important general area, 20 and 21. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so yeah, with, with YQ with those with those moves, I mean you absolutely you you, you can you can trade these types of <laughs> trades intraday, but you gotta you gotta once you see it come on a scan, you gotta start drawing your lines. Yeah. And the like, thing is guys, that's the only way like, to do it. You gotta well, take a moment, draw your lines. If you miss the trade, you miss the trade, but it's better prepared than unprepared. And right. you know, I'd rather be prepared and take a loss than unprepared and take a loss and be pissed that I oh took my the trade. God. 
ill prepared. Dude, because so. the thing is, the thing is, you guys could theoretically find a line on anything if you forced your, you, you, if you forced your eyes, dude. You're like, there's a line somewhere in this. It's up. It's on news, guys. You got to do what's in process, man. The reason why my charts look the same every fucking day, dude, or Bows or Alex's or Joe's, is because it is an expected move that we want or an expected, you know, pattern that just plays out and out and out. So you got to do that, you know, not just because something's up. Like, oh man, I can find a line in this somewhere. Like, it's not about like being a scavenger. It's about really you know preparing for battle and being like oh dude like i mean i see this four times a week you know what i mean like like what was the what like Gebo, that was the example you know i see this move yep. four times a week if it reaches nine dude it's got a really good chance to fail at this top and if i because you know it's got a lot of range like we teach you got to size down and say look I'm willing to start in here and then go up to, well, I go to the next top. So you guys can go wherever you want or like what Harry talks about, like a little bit of a niche. So if you're not willing to go up to the huge top, there's like a little break in price action right here that you could probably use. Right. So again, scaling and size is going to be more uh, on you to back test and figure out what you're comfortable with. But when it comes to the lines, man, we show you the points of interest and the levels that you need to fucking pay attention to. Absolutely. Bingo. <clears throat> Holy shit, dude. I feel like, I, why do I feel like, oh, you know why? Because I've been wrapping up these tutorials much quicker. I was like, damn, dude, I feel like we've been talking for three hours. <laughs> we've been talking for about an hour and a half now. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, Vincent, anytime, man. I mean, every single week, dude, we're trying to get you guys better, man. And, and anybody that's looking into MIC, we're trying to show you why MIC will be beneficial for you. Because again, it's not our agenda or the way we trade stocks guys we teach you how to trade from the only perspective are you trading the chart or are you trading your p l or own bias bro we don't have biases at mic if you're a short or a long trader trade the fucking lines you trade the chart the chart should be telling you where you should go long and the chart should be screaming at you where you should go short because there's a ceiling or etc cetera, etc cetera. man stop clouding all your trading with your own ego or bias or what you think the sec filings are going to do it's all on the chart man yep. obln today was a perfect long dude it just was not screaming at anybody to short this and it's still fucking holding <laughs> look at it fully hold on this man look at so it gonna squeeze on. to 30 tomorrow <laughs> this is i not mean it yeah. i just i i and tosh said it and it's and it's so it's so clear but the fact that it's so incredibly far away from VWAP Dude. just tells you that the dips are going to get bought a lot uh, more than the pops are going to get short. Joe, it's the same distance of the death candle. That's why you don't hit a death candle like you look yeah, at this, dude. Massive. It's the same length of this massive candle that, by the way, had a bottom wick, which usually is the sign of a reversal because wicks are only panic, and you guys need to know that. So for, for the 10,000 DMs I get a week on, hey, Tosh, why do you like three-minute charts? Is because I can simply, simply, simply see death candles very quickly or big rejection candles, which this is. Look at that fucking South Park. Is what is it? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. And that's why we're going to go to 30. <laughs> And I can already tell you right now what lines Bow is shorting. He's shorting 10 and then 10.50. Oh, 100%. Uh, Christopher, they did shorten you see the short the pops to 10 today? and 10.50. Nope. Yes, brother. I don't short merger. <laughs> He's like, I'm not shorting shit anymore. Bow's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, I can milk this last eight minutes. Just hold my beer. <laughs> uh, I know, right? He's fucking He's sick like, of no head, fucking dude, chance. It. He's like, no chance. No chance. Dude, I'm telling you, man, none of this is recommendation buy and sell. Guys, if you want to see what trading is like at MIC, if you got one thing from this webinar, dude, come be a member, man. I mean, the, the level of content, the level of golden nuggets that we have, and you have to understand this, bro. Let me go back to, let me go back to this. How fucking cool is this, dude? This whole webinar that hopefully you guys learned some really cool stuff is two people. We have a 15 to 20 person. Now with our junior mods, dude, we got fucking... We got so many moderators with different perspectives. Harry's videos, James's videos, Aloha. Dude, like you guys don't even understand how much resources you have here, man. This is just me and Joe today. We run this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so 
guys, I'm going to end with this. If you feel like you're stumbling in trading and you are already a member, you're going to want to get the accelerator course. And look, dude, I'm, I'm running some promos, man, where I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to throw it in free with annual, but dude, just text me, man. I'm going to hook you up with an annual and accelerator course kind of bundle deal. If you're not a member, you got to text me Forex though for that one. Text me for For those, <laughs> right, yeah. For if, those that were asking, where do I start? Small caps, large caps, or options? You, you start don't with this. start in a market. You start with the accelerator. You start with you this, guys, because there. this is going to show you how a stock moves. Joe is going it's to teach you process. everything. Dude, it's not, it's not, I need to figure out how to nail this trade. You need to figure out how stocks move, brother. Yes. yes. That's how it starts. Absolutely. So, guys, this is going to be your best start. If you want, uh, you know what, dude, I'll actually do something for you today, man. I'm serious. I will do something for you. If you guys want like, maybe like I can even do a bundle deal. I'll figure this out with Alex. But if you guys want like a month of MIC and a discounted accelerator kind of combo, I'll talk with Alex and see if we can maybe do something in that regard. But I'm telling you guys, man, get a month of MIC, get the accelerator course, and you guys are going to see the potential, dude. It's in <laughs> code WACKER or code Forex today. Text my line and we'll get you situated, man. We'll get you in the club. <laughs> that's funny any all right man i gotta run questions? any reminder shit i gotta grow my facial hair out again <laughs> like, a, like a baby's bottom right now dude all right guys, man i gotta head out we'll see you later you guys are awesome joe's gotta go grill i gotta go sleep you guys are freaking awesome dude text my line i'll get you in before a trader nap i gotta go nap yeah, dude man. i'm dead later, later guys <laughs>